So we are coming to the very last oh, okay. so Thank you very much. Um, my privilege to thank the scientific committee and the organizing committee to speak here. Uh, to be honest, uh, I probably would have come, uh, try to come anyway, but uh, this wonderful invitation had the additional practical effect that it was easier to persuade my family to let me make the trip over the pond. Um, so when uh, Matthias Manning first uh, wrote to me, I don't know when, it was, must have been at least 18 months ago, he suggested that I talk about something related uh, to topology. And that's what I will do today. The talk will be uh, mostly glimpses of a survey. And I have to mention that I gave similar talks Itaka and uh, also at the Topos Institute. So there will be some overlap. So I apologize to that for that. And uh, actually, uh, believe it or not, at the end of uh, intensive category theory uh, week, I will tell you what a category is. Uh, kind of outrageous, almost comical. Uh, then I mentioned Lambex multi categories as a uh, uh, podest to talk about Boronese T categories. And uh, in that environment, I want to talk about some topological concepts. Uh, then I switch to uh, an enriched environment that we call monoidal topology and give you some glimpses of that. Uh, compare this with the Boroni environment. And uh, I want to in particular focus on a particularly important junction in that environment. Uh, then again, in the enriched environment, I look at some topological concepts. And uh, finally, since the monoidal topology environment is very much the environment of convergence. I compare this with more traditional notions of topology and uh, we go from there. So the category has a set of arrows, A, a set of objects, X, and there's a domain function and there's a co-domain function. And you form this pullback up there to have the composable morphisms and uh, of course, this pair DC as an X cross X valued function corresponds uh, to uh, a functor hom from X cross X into Z. <laughs> and uh, you also have the identity function. And since X is a co-product of copies of one, you have just a bunch of elements. And uh, after all the composable pairs, is a fiber product, therefore a disjoint union of cross products, and that gives you the thing on the right. Okay, so not, now let's play that game. Uh, well, before we play that game, uh, the uh, left hand side of the previous slide leads you to internal category theory, and the right hand side, of course, leads you to enriched category theory by trading set in the way indicated. And uh, you have the category of internal categories in, this, in the category C with pullbacks, and you have the enriched categories. And uh, in the set environment, you don't see a difference. But if you make your category slightly more advanced, like pre-ordered sets, then it's uh, already diverging in the left-hand side seems to be richer than the right hand side, despite the name. And certainly you see that when you uh, take cat, okay? 
you have double categories on the right hand side and two categories uh, on the left hand side and two categories on the right hand side. Okay, so let's play the same game with lambda x multi categories where we still have a set of arrows and a set of objects. The difference is now that the domain function lands in lists, in finite lists of objects. Uh, so if you want to create a span again to uh, from Lx to x, then you have to employ the monarch, monarch multiplication of the pre monoid monarch or list monarch. Uh, but everything else at the moment looks pretty much the same. Uh, let's have a look at the composition. So what you want is you want to take uh, an arrow G that goes from a list Y to Z. And the only way you can pre-compose it is that you take a list of lists and morphisms here. And so this F bar is uh, the list of these FIs and you compose them using the concatenation, the monad multiplication. All right, so uh, at the home level, it looks like this. And I just point to the fact that we really had to say what we mean by this, employing this picture. Okay, and that's what uh, I put in this note. So let's go now to Boromi, who just replaced the, the monad L by an arbitrary monad T on any category with pullbacks. All right. And the structure is given by a composition, uh, morphism M and an insertion of identity. And this is subject to, of course, unity and associativity axioms. Associativity, you have to deal already with more pullbacks because you have to have uh, not only composable pairs, but composable triples, which makes it a little bit cumbersome. Uh, and morphisms come with an object pair, uh, object pair, sorry, F uh, lower circle and from X to Y and an arrow part F and uh, they satisfy these commutativity conditions. And uh, while the notion of T category could be seen as a monoid in a category of, in a bi-category of T spans, at the morphism level that doesn't work so well unless you go to a double category environment as was pointed out some time ago by Paré uh, and his co-authors in the case that T is the identity. So some properties of this category of internal T categories, if you uh, basically forget the arrows, you have a vibration and it has a left edge joint, so you have discrete structure, you even have a chaotic structure. Uh, you have your binary products. Uh, now, from now on, you have to have be already a little bit more careful. So if you want to prove that cat T has pullbacks, now that is straightforward if T preserves pullbacks, but we don't do that because it would cut out my main examples. And uh, we spent in a paper this Leila Yegane eight pages to write the proof down, printed pages, uh, would be good if there was a an easier way of doing this. Um, important to note is that the formation of cat T is functorial in T, and you can even fluctuate the T uh, on various categories as long as the category uh, categories are connected by functors that preserve pullback. So it's a generalized notion of uh, morphism of monads there. Uh, in any case, without that generalization, you can always say that the T category has, by restriction, an underlying internal uh, uh, category in C. Here is uh, 
a non-trivial theory, you can prove that there is a comprehensive factorization system in cat T, uh, provided that you have not only pullbacks, but uh, reflexive co-equalizers, and these being stable, but the co-equalizers have to be preserved by T. Um, so this, this theorem, which is in fact in that paper with Jürgen, uh, implies in particular the uh, Johnston thing in this elephant uh, and T is the identity. It also gives the comprehensive factorization system in multi categories, uh, which is a special case of a Berger Kaufmann paper who provide a different environment in which you can prove the comprehensive factorization system. But the intersection between the two theorems, the two environments, seems to be very small. So I indicated that you know this to work in, in, in T categories in Boronese T categories, and I encourage you to have a look in his original Cahier paper. Uh, it's it's not uh, not an easy uh, 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 environment to work in. It's a bit cumbersome, in particular since his notation is also a bit cumbersome. I find, but uh, so let's make things easy. So now we go to T orders. T order means that the pair D C is jointly monic. So the effect of this is that the morphisms I and N, if they exist, are uniquely determined. Their existence become properties. And uh, for a G-functor, it's already de defined uh, by the object part. The existence of the arrow part is a property called monotonicity. And once you do this, you get these internal T orders. And under multi exception, assumptions on C, including world poweredness, this becomes a topological functor. This means vibration, co vibration, and the fibers are just lattices. And uh, in particular, you can easily deal with co-limits in this case. And here is a trivial observation, which when I first saw it in Bourdieu's paper, really surprised me. Algebra sort of is embedded in this environment because if you look at the T categories for which D is an identity morphism, you get exactly T algebras. So if I let my fantasy a little bit go, then I can say, okay, on the left hand side, you have Eilenberg more categories over C, you have algebra. On the right hand side, you have quite involves category theory, and somewhere in the middle, there is a topological environment given by ORT T, and everything there lives over C, of course. So uh, if I look at my list monad, I have the Allenberg Moore category monads. Uh, I have ORT T, which is multi orders. So it's a relation of strings of elements to an element. You can think of this as a sort of support relation. The string supports another element. Uh, and you have multi categories. If you do this for the ultra filter monad, then of course you have compact Hausdorff spaces. You get an exactly topological spaces in the middle. And on the right hand side, you get some strange animals. Uh, whereby, yeah, you have arrows and objects, but the domain function, the domain is really given by ultra filters on the set of objects, or on, yeah, on the set of objects. I will say more about this uh, uh, in a second. So, first, something more easy. So, RT is reflective in T under mild additional assumptions. Uh, and the Allen-Bengmoor category is reflective in or T. 
there we employ general adjoint functor theorem uh, because in the case of the ultra filter monad, you're talking stone check compactification. So there's no easy constructive proof here. Uh, once you have such a reflection in this general environment, you can say what Hausdorff means. Uh, you can say what completely regular means, namely that the reflection arrow is Cartesian over uh, C. Remember that cut T is a vibration over C. So that is a very natural concept. You can put the two things together and uh, all this is taken off. So again, here is my algebra, here is my category theory, and in the middle, something topological is happening. Uh, this, this category C rec T uh, appears actually in Baroni's work. He never talked about complete regular uh, spaces, even though he considers the ultra filter monad. He calls it EQT, and I have no idea why. Somebody can help me. But he realizes that the thing has a universal role to play, namely, normally you have vibrations over C, but on the left hand side from algebra, you don't have a vibration. So C rec T is the universal way of making the Eilenberg Moore uh, category over C uh, embed this into a fiber category over C. And I have indicated the universal property, and you can modify this a little bit. I do this also for Tichti, but Hausdorff is a separation axiom. You destroy topologicity or the vibration. You still have a mono vibration. This means Cartesian liftings over monomorphisms. All right, uh, one more glimpse. So I mentioned this comprehensive factorization system. So one part is talking about discrete four vibrations or all vibrations that tend, tend to use Grotendieck's original name uh, by saying the obvious definition is you want to say that you have this pullback diagram on the left. Uh, if you disregard the T, you know that this is a definition of uh, discrete co vibration. And having this pullback in general, if you are in, a, in, in, in the subcategory of thick T, then on the right hand side, if you have this, uh, you consider this a naturality diagram, and you realize you have the left hand side, the right hand side is a pullback diagram, which is a characterization of the most important class of continuous maps that you have in this environment and the proper maps, they be closed maps, as was realized a long time ago in 1958 by Isabel Hendricks. So I, I see this as a nice example of category theory uh, embracing something uh, important in, in topology. Uh, so now let me let me get to the enriched part. So we have for multi categories this home function, which goes from LX cross X to X. And I look at this as a pro functor on discrete categories. So it is really just an LX by X matrix of sets. Okay, uh, and I write it as an algebraic structure A. But this is really this home, home A. And uh, the existence of units, I can uh, look at that as a diagram uh, with, this, with a two cell in there. And I can do this also for the composition. Now, uh, I remind you when we talked about this before, I I have the home A say Y bar Z that I have, but I have to really say, if I have a calligraph of X, which is a list of lists, I have to say what the left hand side, the red thing is, and I defined it. 
And what corresponds to this is I have to not only say what L of a function is, but I have to say what L of this profile, L of this profile A is. So I have to extend somehow the L. And seeing this, this led Maria Manuel and myself originally to the following setting. We take a symmetric monoidal closed category and we have a set monad and we assume that there's a left extension to this uh, matrices of sets. Now the sets get replaced by objects in the monoidal closed category V. And that uh, gets uh, embedded into mat V. Mat V has the same, the same objects like sets, and uh, it has these matrices of morphisms, and it has two cells. So this extension has to be a lax two functor, which uh, coincides uh, on objects and has these additional properties in particular. It has to uh, uh, preserve strictly uh, or at least pseudo uh, these whiskering, these maps. And when you put the the unit and the multiplication of the monad into this mat v environment, you should have oblax natural transformations. And it's subject to, unfortunately, a ton of compatibility and coherence additions. Uh, I remind you how you uh, compose profunders uh, um, as, as expected. And then you can say what a TV category is. So uh, it's a set together with an array uh, Tx times x of V objects called little a. And you have these two axioms with arrows uh, that are better understood if you look at the familiar diagrams because they come from inscribed two cells in the usual Eilenberg Moore uh, diagrams. And they're subject again to an array of coherence and compatibility conditions. Uh, the good news is if T is the identity, then uh, uh, identity V cat is just V cat. If you take the list monad, you can put that into the MATV environment and you can talk about V multi categories. Uh, thing V equals set. Uh, you can play this game even for the ultra filter monad. And uh, maybe I'll come back to this a little later. All right. So, but it's not. <laughs> You know, I, I, I labor this. If I want to do mathematics, I want to do it, uh, you know, as everybody, I want to find every step verified, et cetera. And there's all this ton of coherence. That can, I, I cannot constantly wave my hands over here, that should be, will be true. So my life is finite. And so let us uh, uh, simplify the whole thing and assume that V is thin. This means just a quantile. And for convenience, I still assume it's uh, commutative, so I don't have to worry about the order how in which I write tensor. And uh, here are some of the familiar examples of Boolean chain, the Lovier quantile, any frame. And here's an example that I write down if you have a monoid and uh, you take the power set of it and multiply subsets as you would accept the you get a quantile but the tensor neutral element is far away from the top element in fact it's a natural uh, so in this environment things get easy i write v relation or i talk about v relations instead of v matrices now these are really v valued relations. I have a set monad 
which I laxly extend to the rel in the same way as said before uh, on the simplifying effect is that I don't worry about uh, many of the conditions that there were before. Uh, these conditions can be slightly relaxed. Um, the original conditions that we had with Manuel were more symmetric, but uh, you, you can have a less symmetric environment that was given by Kevin Seal. Uh, so you still have uh, a lux functor, but the second bullet is the, the big difference. You allow that if you take the graph of T of a function, uh, that this is smaller than when you take the lux extension T hat and apply it to the graph. Um, and uh, the same is true. Surprisingly, under these conditions, the whisk screen turns out to be still straight. So that is good. Um, TV categories, so now I have less or equal signs. So this is really the complete story what a TV category now is. It's a set X with a V valued relation from TX to X satisfying the reflexivity axiom and the uh, uh, transitivity and we have sort of monotone functions between them. And uh, we can express this also in terms of relational composition, but we have this monarch, so we employ Kleisley or it's dual to, to write this down, but uh, you have to pay attention to this circle of the, the Kleisley convolution. In general, you cannot say that it is associative, but under mild conditions, it is, and in fact, it's hard to find examples when it isn't, but uh, uh, that is one of, of the differences of this seal environment to the original uh, environment. So what can we say about properties? TV cat is a topological category over sets. It has both adjoints, and therefore it has all the wonderful properties that one expects. And import, important is, that the formation of TV cat is functorial both in the monad and in the quantile, which makes for lots of canonical functors that you create in this way. And here's a non trivial result. So, Hoffman finally proved in full generality that uh, you can always restrict in principle, to the two chain. You can, out of T and V, create monad, a monstrous monad pi, uh, such that TV cat is pi to cat. There's a catch to this, and I'll come to this in a second. So already Boroni, in comparing uh, uh, the two sides, uh, in the special case of two, realize that T2 cat is the same as, uh, that his or T is the same as T2 cat, and T2 cat was originally uh, defined by bar. But we always have to keep in mind that we have to fix the extension T hat. And it is important here that you take the obvious, if you like, write a relation, a mere relation as a span, you just uh, uh, apply T to it. That is the bar extension. And the disappointing thing about this amazing result by Hoffman is that the extension is in no way bar. So uh, you unfortunately have uh, uh, a divergence of the two approaches when, when you have uh, that V is not two. So anyway, let's look at two again. These are pre-ordered sets, multi-ordered sets. Uh, and now topological spaces. So whenever I uh, talk about this, people raise or, or, or you see curly foreheads. 
uh, about this transitivity axiom for ultra filter conversions. Uh, so it says if you have this color graphic X, um, which is an ultra filter on the set of ultra filters on the set X, converging to an ultra filter Y, and that ultra filter Y converge to Z, then the monad multiplication applied to this ultra filter of ultra filters, which is an ultra filter on X, converge to Z. So how, how should I picture that? Well, at least one can picture that. Oops. At least one can picture this uh, when you replace ultra filters by sequences. So if you have sequences Xi converging to Yi, so then on the left hand side with a calligraphic X, you have a sequence of sequences. And on, then the Y's form uh, a sequence Y bar. And if this sequence Y bar converges to Z, then you look at this infinite matrix on the left hand side that is explicitly there. Take the diagonal and the axiom is that the diagonal has to converge to Z. So that is at least how I naively picture this. Um, other people might think a little different. And now you go away from two. So let us take um, zero infinity. Of course, you have metric spaces. You can take multi-metric spaces uh, where you uh, define the uh, monad, the extension of the list monad just by adding, taking basically the tensor product at zero infinity. Uh, what are the monads? I mean, uh, you can, you, you have a string of points. You can, these are goods and uh, you want to get to a new good to be produced. You, you, what is the cost of this? So it's a cost function that you can, can uh, think of here. Uh, and now do this at the ultra filter level. So Clementino and Hoffman have this extension, which very much lo looks like house of distance, no, only that you have uh, ultra filters are not, not subsets. And then they proved that you get loans approach spaces, uh, even though loan didn't introduce them like this, uh, defined in terms of a point set distance. And um, if I have time, I will come back to this at the end. And in fact, this formula, this uh, super formula, you can transport or, or you, you can establish it for any uh, constructively, completely distributive quantile, just it becomes a neat soap formula uh, as indicated. And lo and behold, you actually did this, not only for quantile in the original uh, paper with, with Manuel, um, you, 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 you can even do this in the fat environment of a monoidal closed category, symmetric monoidal closed co-complete, in which every object is a co-product of connected object. A connected object is one whose home preserves co-products, home to sets. And I didn't squeeze in the crucial conditions that the, uh, uh, the unit of the monoidal structure has to be connected and tensor products of connected objects have to be connected. And then you have something like ultra categories now defined in an enriched version. And my suspicion is that it is the same like in the uh, Moroni uh, environment, but I couldn't prove it yet. I'm not, no, I need a genius with ultra filters. Um, so now I want to talk about an assumption in more detail that I think is fundamental. So we have a set monarch and we have a lax extension. 
And I want to say that then, and I am in hindsight, hindsight uh, surprised how long it took to realize it. I, I really oh. kicked myself uh, for that because one should have seen this immediately. If you take a V category, X comma A0, so A0 is the home of that V category, and you just apply the set monad to the set X and an extension to the structure. And you get a V category again. You get a monad, a good monad. And when you have a good monad, then you want to form the Aldenberg near category. And of course, you want to compare this with our TV cat. And that was done by Clementino and Hoffman in their paper shortly afterwards. So how does the functor K go? K is not for comparison, but for composition. Uh, because what you do is when you have a V category X with a structure A0, and then Xi is the Ironberg Moore structure, you just compose the two structures. You just compose them and you, you get uh, a V relation from Tx. And if you go the other way around, you take the free Eilenberg Moore algebra and you realize that Tx actually becomes a V category in a natural way. And they are adjoined. And why is this fundamental? So I will not talk very much about this, but a general problem is if you have a TV category, it's a very asymmetric concept. So what is dualization? I mean, you cannot just dualize a multi category. But here is the, the mechanism. You go to the left hand side. If you're on the right, you go to the left hand side, this M. You do your business there and come back. Because the left hand side is a symmetric environment, a more symmetric vibe. And the amazing thing that Hoffman did in his 2007 advances paper is if you take V, which is with its internal home, and you put a good T, T structure xi on this, then V becomes a TV category and things flow from there. But I won't dwell further on this. This is really his subject, so why should I give his talk? And another reason why this is important is this adjunction Km is a factor of the Eilenberg Moore junction. With, I mean, K and M involves the monad, monad multiplication. This involves the monad unit. And the composite is just the Eilenberg Moore junction. So, in the example of the ultra filter monad and V equals two, you have on the left hand side ordered compact Hausdorff spaces. In the middle, you have topological spaces. And on the right hand side, you have pre ordered sets. And K topologizes an ordered compact Hausdorff space by putting a new topology on it, which says that an ultra filter X bar converges to Y if the limit point on, of the given compact Hausdorff topology is less or equal to Y. And M orders the set of ultra filters in a way that A belongs, whenever A belongs. So you say x ultra filter x is less or equal to y whenever a closed set in the ultra filter x is also in y. And the pair of a's are given by specialization order and Alexander's topology. So all the sort of uh, essential ingredients of order topology come, come in here. Uh, so the more complete picture is like that because every Thing lives over set, you have the insertion D here as a discrete V category, and it has a left edge joint that I dare call pi zero on both sides. And I want to make a comment on that. Uh, so the composition uh, D followed by K is the inclusion. So the left adjoint must be the stone check compactification. And uh, 
So why do I call this left adjoint pi zero, the left adjoint of D? Because when you, when you take a normal space up here, then beta X is homeomorphic to the space of connected components with respect to the order that has been imposed by the functor M. Uh, I don't know a more general uh, thing than uh, normalcy. I asked yet about this and he doesn't know either. So that's where it ends at the moment. Uh, so now I want to talk about some inherent topological properties that come from the setting. So on the one hand, you have this reflexivity axiom and you can express it this way, like on the left hand side. And if you invert the inequality, then you have T1 spaces. Okay, doesn't sound too exciting, but what happens if you write the transitivity axiom, like on the left and turn around the inequality sign? Then all of a sudden, exponentiality pops up. That was first realized in a paper by, beautiful paper by Claudio Pisani in 1999 in, in, in TAC. So fundamental concepts here appear very naturally in, in this uh, convergence environment. Uh, that's a warning, of course, the lower circle is always left adjoint to the upper circle. And so you can express the axioms in different ways, but then if you play this game of inverting equality, you might get something totally different or uninteresting. You can do this with maps. So one, you have one way of saying, what a continuous map is, or a TV functor, as we say, we invert the uh, inequality, you get proper maps. You get the most important concept of continuous map that there is, which says that given an ultra filter X and its image under F converges to a point, then there must exist a point in the fiber, which is a limit point of the given order filter. Now, sort of dualize it, dualize it, starting from uh, a dual kind of yeah, alternative presentation of TV functor using the adjunction lower, uh, you know, this upper uh, circle. Uh, then you get openness. So open in this sense is really due to closed proper, closed uh, pullback stable closed map. You can easily prove standard properties. The proofs are all shorter than in a traditional environment. And even the most important theorem that there is on proper maps is a two line proof. Um, I'll come in a second to this. You can also prove that open maps are um, stable under taking co products, but uh, that is, of course, not obtained by dualization from the first because you must not confuse order dualization with, with uh, categorical dualization. The proof is much easier. Here's one other thing. So if you have a function, F lower circle is left adjoined to F upper circle. Uh, if uh, V is two, then uh, <clears throat> any relation that is uh, left, uh, where a, a is left adjoined to right adjoined will give you a function. So let us look in the V environment at the two four triangular inequalities. What do they mean? Well, one means Hausdorffness, which is, which reads as, if it is not false that a given, given ultra filter Z converges to both X and Y, then X is equal to Y. And 
the thing, uh, the other thing means that it has to be true that every photo filter has a conversion point. And so the Manus theorem here becomes a triviality. Of course, it's a bit, yeah. I don't know. All right. Um, I don't know how much time I have left, uh, Mr. Chairman. Oh, oh, oh good. Yeah. It cannot be true. <laughs> hmm? I follow female advice. Ten minutes. I think seven minutes. Seven minutes. Okay, seven minutes. So here's one more picture. Uh, if you define what a normal space is and an extremely disconnected space is, you don't see that they're dual to each other, but they are dual to each other. And what comes into place is this functor M of the fundamental. Uh, uh, a junction that puts an order, a natural order on uh, ultra filters. And normality can be shown like if you have a cospan x, y, z, then you find an ultra filter above. Put this picture on its head, you get extremal disconnectedness. The two are dual to each other. <laughs> It's not too hard to prove, but there are lots of instances that you see things that you just don't see in the traditional geometric environment. So finally, you know, starting to step away, away from convergence, uh, we can take the power set moment, which I haven't mentioned yet, and uh, <clears throat> Look at the function that really is an endo function. I have just written the power set in two different ways. Uh, and um, there's a particular extension of P, which is not a R extension. So that's why it didn't get mentioned before. It's not so symmetric like the bar thing. You have reflexivity and transitivity. That's transitivity entails idempotency, as you might easily see, because B could be C of A and it's also monotricity. And you get top if you add the finite additivity. And of course, you have continuity. And it's a child's play to put this whole thing into the B context. Right? And uh, then the, the axioms look uh, like this. Uh, so we have a notion of V topological space. And if you take now for V zero infinity, then you get these approach spaces that I mentioned before, where I now write as Lone did as point set distance, whereas in my environment, you should write set point. Uh, distance. And he expresses this uh, a little bit different. I mean, when you're an alumnus, you can't resist using epsilons. This is an epsilon free uh, presentation of his category. And uh, now, I do this like this. Um, so now, this power set monad and the ultra photon monad. They interact uh, by this uh, relation epsilon x, even in the uh, general V context, but V has to be completely distributive. And in particular, when you have when you have uh, a convergence relation, you define a closure where you say that y is in the closure. If there is an ultra filter basically on A that converges to Y. So you can read this. If you read it in the two contexts, it's, it's all very, very natural. And you have a pair of adjoint functors. And um, so um, UV cat gets 
embedded into V closure spaces, and the image is precisely V topological spaces. So here you have V top expressed traditionally in terms of closure, and on the right hand side you have uh, the convergence presentation, and the two coincide, and it reproduces. There is Clementino and Hoffman. And that's basically all I have to say. So I think we are only at the beginning to really uh, put in closer contact the two different approaches, the internal and the enriched context. There are things like, you know, what is this fundamental assumption? Do we have something like this in the Baroni context? Uh, which extent uh, covers? Uh, does Boroni cover all the TV categories? Um, there are tons of more monads that should be uh, 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 explored more uh, rigorously. It's partly it's done, but uh, in particular, probabilistic monads like we have seen today uh, should be considered. And this business of doing basic category theory is all is, is really only half done. For instance, a two categorical structure, which is completely neglected. But uh, the two categorical structure, for instance, on T cat requires you to really assume that T preserves pullbacks. So that's why you didn't make uh, too much headway there. But uh, it's an open field. And uh, I would think. Wonderful, very interesting talk. Are there questions or comments from the audience? Yes. Okay. In the case of the ultrafilter monad and the quantile two, okay, this is still point set topology. So, how do you um, uh, associate uh, a shift of data uh, to um, Sorry, can you? Okay, I say it. In the case of the topological, okay, you have uh, the example of topological spaces, and you have an example of um, ordered set like, or multi ordered set. So let's say in the case of the topological spaces, this is point set topology, right? Okay, how do you associate a shift um, of data uh, locally constructively to such a topological space? Because, yes. <laughs> Uh, so there, there was only one instance. Okay. Do you want to answer this? I, I would like only to give one comment. So. The last part, so far, we required complete distributivity. But there was one instance before in the talk that I could do this constructive uh, uh, complete distributivity. So we are sort of aware of the delicacy here. We try to avoid choice as much as possible and make it constructive as possible. But there are certain barriers that we cannot overcome either knowing that is not possible or not knowing yet that could be possible. Third, third question. Excuse me, you were asked uh, ask to. So, other questions from the audience? It doesn't seem to be the case. How about other participants? Yeah. Paul, go ahead. Paul Taylor, go ahead. Hello, Hello. yes, uh, you talked about compact household spaces. Um, you may be aware that in various kinds of constructed topology, there's a lattice dual to compactness called overtness. Um, I wonder whether you could include 
um, a point of view on overt discrete spaces in your picture? So of course, on um, local theory, if you're alluding to this, gives you uh, a vehicle to uh, be more choice free than I might be certain certain points. I, I didn't quite understand the final question that you had for. Uh, maybe it's too late in the conference to pursue this. I'll 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 send you an email. Okay, all right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You can go ahead. Yeah. Ah, not yet. <laughs> okay. uh, hello. Uh, thanks uh, for the talk. That was uh, very interesting. Um, I was just wondering. Um, because with the usual uh, internal categories uh, construction, you can iterate it. But I think as well, if you start off with a Cartesian monad on a category with pullbacks, then you get another Cartesian monad on you know, T multi categories. And, and it sounds like you should be able to iterate that as well. I was just wondering if um, you'd thought about that and if it gives anything interesting or, or if there's, some kind of interesting interpretation to, I don't know, T double categories or, or, or multiple categories. Um, thanks. Uh, so it is, it is certainly true that you create yourself a beautiful environment if you have a Cartesian monad. Uh, but uh, our focus was on the monads that really give me topological spaces. So uh, the focus was on the ultra filter monad and we were constantly considering. Of course, if you do things for the list monarch and so on, you are in a, in a wonderful world. But uh, um, I, we, we, we try to avoid key assumptions like the preservation of pullbacks, which made life very, very difficult. And I'm aware of it, but the focus was to get the right um, category. So, let me say, of course, one wants, one gets more beautiful category theory, but you are stepping out of the world of immediate applications, which I sort of hesitated to, to do, but uh, your comment and your question is, is very well, well taken. And uh, I'm not saying that uh, uh, one shouldn't do this. And uh, I'm sure that I mean, good things on our categorical experience tells us when you do the right thing, eventually something good will also come out in terms of applications. But that is at the moment for me just hopeful thinking. Thanks. I have one question. In one of the first theorems that you had, you assume that your monad preserves reflexive point polarizers. So, do you know something? How strong this thing is? I suspect that for a monad over set, this is precisely the same thing as being finite. Uh, I don't know whether it's precisely unitary, that, that I would have to look into this. It certainly excludes the ultra filter monad. Um, so, I'm not saying when I had the slide. If you have the comprehensive factorization system in TCAT, which has this uh, assumption that you get the, um, the uh, uh, map compactification for, for free, you don't get it as a corollary. But the main thing, thing for me was to see that the notion of uh, discrete of vibration corresponds precisely to perfect maps. Thank you for this comment. Other comments or questions? No. Could you say something more about pi zero? Um, about that pi zero, you uh, you look at the big picture of the big uh, adjunction 
Yeah, so I, I discussed it with uh, Dirk quite a bit. Um, it's it's really, okay, you have this, this left edge joint pi zero, uh, but it deserves so far in my mind the name pi zero only when I start with a normal normal space. I, I, I mean, it, it's true that we factorize always the, so the stone check compactification, but that it deserves the name pi zero, I can only say in case of a normal space. Unfortunately, I cannot say more about that. But uh, if you have thoughts about that, I hear them. <laughs> so that seems to be all the questions or comments. Let's thank Walter again. <laughs>2020 conference, which was stopped, you know, due to the pandemic. And now this planning and replanning and managed to have basically two simultaneous conferences in terms of organizational work here and uh, virtually. And this is an incredible achievement. And I think the categorical community at large and certainly the people here, either, um, I deserve to applaud in the strongest term the scientific committee and mostly the organizing committee for all the fantastic work that you have done. It was incredibly enjoyable for me to be in general. So thank you. Thank you, thank you. Uh, it, it, I, I don't know what to say. It's, it's, it's incredible that we managed to get to the final minutes. I want to take at least one minute to thank all those people that were invisible to at least those online. All the people from the e-learning department of the university, which have managed this incredible uh, broadcasting of, of one of the conferences, I would say the first for the, no, the third, second for the third, as Walter said, and, uh, and Laura, Alberto who's not here, and uh, Giancarlo, who you, not, you could not see because it's behind the camera, as well as Davide, Valeria, and Lucio, they were fantastic, they've been smooth through the six days of the conference, and also all the other people that made sure that the local participants were in a safe environment, and particularly Cecilia, Matteo, and Enrico, who made sure that we were all healthy. And also a very big thank you goes to the whole category theory community that helped us, supported us in organizing this. Thank you very much. And thank you. And this, I'm afraid, finishes the conference. <laughs>